Assalamu alaikum. I am Mobi Nas from MK Preparations and today we discuss about class reptilia. And the topics we are going to cover includes general characteristics, classification, form and function of the reptiles. This topic is very much important uh, with respect to the different competitive exams like the Punjab Public Service Commission (PPSC), Federal Public Service Commission (FPSC), Sindh Public Service Commission (SPSC), Khyber Pakhtunkhwa (KPSC), and the material uh, has been collected from different source books. Uh, and uh, these sor source books include FSC Biology Part One and Part Two, Federal Biology Part One and Part Two, Zoology Miller and Harley Fifth and Tenth Edition, Hickman Zoology, Campbell Biology, and Rowan Biology. So the contents we are going to discuss about uh, in this topic includes the general characteristics of reptiles, success of reptiles on land. evolution of reptiles extra embryonic membranes classification of reptiles difference in classification in different books support and movement nutrition and digestion circulation and gas exchange excretion and osmoregulation nervous and sensory functions reproduction and development and all the important past paper questions from the ppsc zoology and some important question that i have quoted in these slides that are very much important with respect to the uh, coming ppsc or fpsc or spsc or kppsc uh, papers or exams so first of all uh, we're going to discuss about the general characteristics of reptiles and first of all it's about the skin the body of the reptiles that body of the reptiles is covered with the keratinized epidermal scales the body is covered with the scales and the origin of the scales is epidermal as we know there are three layers of the body epidermis uh, mesoderm and the endoderm so the scales have been originated from the epidermis and their nature is keratinized they are made up of keratinized keratin and sometimes the bony dermal plates the integument is covered with few glands their skin is covered with few glands for the secretions of mucoid type then number 2 uh, we are going to discuss about the limbs uh, the reptiles contain two paired limbs usually with five toes and adapted for climbing running or paddling Uh, they consist of two pairs of the limbs the first pair of the limbs and in the diagram you can see the second pair of the limbs and each limb has five toes 1 2 3 4 and 5 you can count these there are five toes and these limbs are adapted for different functions like for the climbing for their running and for their paddling the limbs are vestigial or absent in snakes and some lizards there are some snakes and lizards in which there are no limbs as you can see here in the diagram the snakes have no limbs then we're going to discuss about the skeleton the skeleton is well ossified means it's containing the uh, cavities the ribs uh, with the sternum the sternum is absent in snakes uh, ribs contain the sternum for the attachment of the muscles but uh, the snakes have no sternum the skull with one occipital condyle the occipital condyle is actually uh, a portion uh, as a, um, a structure on uh, just behind the skull to which the first atlas vertebrae is going to articulate so there is only one occipital condyle you can see here the diagram that is one occipital condyle in case of reptiles then we are going to discuss about the respiration they respire through lungs the uh, reptiles have lungs for their respiration they have no gills they their cloaca pharynx and skin they use these structures for respiration as well their cloaca uh, that is a part of the excretory system 
their cloaca as well as their pharynx okay and their skin they use these three structures as well for the respiration for the purpose of gas exchange then we're going to discuss about the circulation and um, they have pulmonary and the systemic circuits in uh, we know in case of pulmonary circulation the uh, blood is uh, the deoxygenated blood is going to move towards the lungs and the uh, oxygenated blood from the lungs is going to move towards the heart in case of systemic circuits oxygenated blood will be delivered to the body and from the body the deoxygenated blood is going to be collected then the heart contains the sinus venosus actually the sinus venosus of the uh, reptiles is, has been replaced by the pacemaker that works as a battery that is a kind of battery operated system attached on the uh, right atrium and atrium okay and uh, completely divided into two chambers the atrium is completely divided into two chambers but the ventricle is showing the incomplete separation you can see here these are the atria the left and right atria and uh, they are uh, separated completely but the ventricles are showing the incomplete separation but in case of crocodiles the ventricle is completely separated there is only one group of the reptiles in which the ventricle is completely separated so partial septum in ventricle separates the oxygenated blood from the deoxygenated the crocodiles with the sinus venosus to atria and two ventricles it means that there is complete separation of ventricles for the crocodiles then we are going to discuss about thermoregulation that they are ectothermic ecto means from the outside environment and thermic means heat they are going to get heat from their external environment they absorb heat from the external sources and there are some physiological mechanisms like the panting the basking and the chromatophores they use to regulate their body temperatures and they spend winter by entering torpor torpor is a kind of condition in which the animals are going to uh, low down slow down their breathing or respiratory rate Uh, to cope up with the harsh conditions of the winter so in this way they are going to uh, absorb heat from the external sources like you can see here there is a rock uh, that is uh, too much heated and the lizard is uh, getting heat by the process of uh, radiations from this uh, rock and uh, this one is panting panting is a kind of the uh, respiration from the surfaces from the buccal surfaces they are just going to open their mouth and then through these uh, mucoid or through these moist surfaces they are going to exchange the gases so that is panting and this one is the basking the basking of the lizard in the sun then we are going to discuss about the uh, excretory system so they have kidneys that are paired the kidneys are paired and the type of the kidney is metanephric kidney that is present here the uric acid is their main nitrogenous waste that they are going to be excreted out then their nervous system nervous system with optic lobes on the dorsal side of brain as you can see in the diagram the optic lobe is present on the dorsal side of the brain there uh, they have the enlarged cerebrum you can see here if you're going to compare the cerebellum and the cerebrum you will observe the cerebrum is an enlarged structure they have 12 pairs of the cranial nerves the cranial nerves that are uh, leading towards or away from the brain then uh, if we're going to discuss about their reproduction they have uh, separate sexes their fertilization is internal uh, these sperms are going to enter in the female body in the female reproductive tract to fertilize the eggs in the oviduct then the copulatory organ a penis a hem penis uh, is present in some species but it may absent in different other species then their eggs are covered with calcareous ore means uh, made up of calcium carbonate and the leathery shells so you can see here their eggs are covered with the calcareous or the leathery shells and they have some extra embryonic membranes extra embryonic membranes it means that are present outside the embryo 
and these include the amnion the chorion the yolk sac and androis okay and they have no larval stages as well uh the reptiles have no larval stages but amphibians have some larval stages so you can see here there are different membranes the amniotic sac or amniotic fluid the amnion the embryo the chorion the allantois the yolk sac the yolk and the albumin we'll study about their functions and their uh, positions in your next topics uh, in detail then they have checopsin's organ that is also known as the vomero nasal organ and uh, it works as a chemoreceptor to detect the olfaction or smell so you can see here there is uh, the checopsin's organ and it is going to detect the olfaction it's uh, uh, going to sense the chemoreceptor the chemicals then the main reasons for the success of reptiles on the land these include the evolution of legs for their support the lungs for their efficient breathing ex covered with the shell their skin covered with dry scales to reduce the water loss the their heart is more efficient for circulation and the loss of the lateral line system of fishes and amphibians it means the fishes and amphibians have the lateral line system but the reptiles do not have this system because they have no larval stages now our next topic is the evolution of reptiles the amniotes are present in 320 million years old carboniferous fossil beds okay the amniotes actually originated in carboniferous period and their adaptive radiation began in the late carboniferous and early permian periods and they dominated about 250 million years ago on the earth the on the basis of the the openings behind their eyes they are classified the amniotes are classified into different groups that includes the anapsids the diapsids and the synapsids and remember these type of classification is based on the openings behind the eyes that are known as the fenestri so first of all the synapsids the synapsids have the single opening behind the eye orbit the in the temporal region in the skull so you can see here in the temporal region behind the eye orbit there is one opening so they have synapses they are synapsids and uh, in which organisms this characteristic is present it includes the therapsids they were mammal like reptiles and we know that the mammals uh, evolved from the therapsids then the anapsids an apsid skull lack the openings fenestri in the temporal region as you can see here there is a temporal region and behind the eye orbit uh, uh, there is no fenestri or there is no opening here so they have no opening so an apsids the common ancestors of the sun apsid lineage and the earliest reptiles had an an apsid type skull and it includes the turtles the turtles are the only animals that are having the an apsid skull diapsids they have the upper and the lower openings in the temporal region of the skull as you can see here just behind the eye orbit there are two openings the uh, upper and the lower openings so in the temporal region so these are called the temporal fenestri on the basis of these two openings the name diapsids have been shown here so in which organisms uh, the diapsid type skull is present it includes the two lineages the first one is the lepidosaur and second one is the archosaur the lepidosaurs include the snakes the lizards and the tortoras the sphenodon organism and the archosaur lineage includes the crocodiles and the birds crocodiles and birds were evolved from the archosaur lineage and the dinosaurs became extinct about 665 million years ago as you can see here in the diagram that is the evolution the geological time chart is showing and uh, that one is the carboniferous period and you can see here the carboniferous period uh, is uh, the time basically in which the evolution of the synapsids taken place so first of all the amniotes are divided into an apsids okay the an apsids and the diapsids then apsids includes the uh, mammals so this synapsid lineage diapsid lineage and the anapsid lineage 
So first of all, we are going to discuss about the synapsid lineage. It includes different uh, further lineages, the pilicosaurs, the therapsids. From the therapsids, you can see here mammals evolved. So mammals originated from the synapsid lineage. They have synapsid type skull. And in case of the anapsids, you can see here the plesiosaurs, the turtles. The turtles has the anapsid type skull. No. The diapsids. The diapsids are further divided into two lineages, the lepidosaurs and the archosaurs. If we're going to discuss about the lepidosaurs, they include the tuatalas and the lizards and the snakes. Okay. So uh, they are uh, involved in the lepidosaur lineage and then the archosaur lineage. Archosaur lineage includes some extinct uh, dinosaur groups that are ichthyosaurs, pterosaurs. Ornithischians and Saurischians, these are all extinct. Okay, these four groups have been extinct. And then it includes the birds and the crocodiles. Okay, so these one uh, are included, these are the living groups of the Archosaur lineage. As you can see here again in this diagram, the synapsid, the mammals. Diapsids divided into Lepidosauria and Orcosauria. Lepidosauria includes the members of the order Sequimeta, like the lizards and the snakes, as well as the Spinodon, means Tuatara. The Arcosaurs include the dinosaurs. These are the four groups of the dinosaurs that have been extinct. The living includes the crocodiles and then the Avis, means the birds. Now we're going to discuss about the amniotic eggs. Amniotes, uh, animals, are the reptiles, birds, and mammals that have extraembryonic membranes. The anamniotes that do not have extraembryonic membranes include the fish and amphibians. These are very much important point with respect to their, um, with respect to your PPSC exams. The reptiles were the first vertebrates to possess the amniotic eggs. Uh, as we know, with respect to evolution, the fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. That is a uh, kind of lineage. So if I'm following this lineage, according to that, fish and amphibians are anamniotes and reptiles are the first that are having the amniotic eggs. The, the eggs in the reptiles are of telolacetal type. It means the yolk is restricted to only the vegetal pole of the egg. The amniotic egg eggs has a series of the extraembryonic membranes. The first one is the amnion, that is the innermost membrane. It is very much important point with respect to your exam. It's an innermost membrane, okay, and it encloses the embryo in a fluid sac. As you can see here, the amnion, it's the innermost membrane. The greeny portion, the this one is the embryo, and just outside the embryo, you can see here the amnion, the and that is known as the amniotic sac filled with the amniotic fluid. Okay, so that is amnion. And uh, how it's going to function, it uh, will protect the embryo from the shock and the desiccation, from drying out. It will protect the embryo from drying out and from the shocks. And then the second one is elantois. It's a ventral outgrowth of the gut. As you can see here, the elantois. It's the ventral, if we are linking this to the embryo, so that is the gut. So from the gut, the there is a ventral growth of the elantois. How it's going to function? It serves both as the respiratory surface and as a chamber for the storage of the nitrogenous waste. That is also very much important point. The, the membrane uh, that is going to store the nitrogenous wastes of the embryo. It's the elantois. The last one is the chorion. It encloses all the membranes near the shell. As you can see here. That's the shell, the outermost shell, and just below the shell, that is the chorion. So it's going to enclose all the membranes near the shell. And it's, it is highly vascularized, and it aids in the gaseous exchange. The amniotic eggs of the reptiles, birds, and one group of the mammals are enclosed in a shell. As you can see here, the eggs are, have been enclosed in a shell. The shell protects the embryo and uh, the albumin of the amniotic egg cushions and provides moisture and nutrients for the embryo. The function of that albumin, the white portion, the albumin uh, is to moisturize and provide the, uh, and supply the embryo with the nutrients. Okay. 
the york york is going to supply the embryo with food all of these features are adaptations for the development on the land now we are moving towards the second major part that is the classification so we are going to discuss about the orders of the reptiles so there are total 8000 species of the reptiles in hickman zoology so there are almost four living orders of the reptiles these orders include the sequimata rhynchocephalia uh, chelonia or testudines and the crocodilia crocodilia so you'll have to focus on these orders and their examples and uh, memorize their number of species i will also uh, differentiate uh, between the number of the species that have been discussed in different books of the zoology like the number of species in of the lizards and the snakes or the order sequimata in different books uh, or editions of the miller and harley as well as the hickman or the campbell biology so uh, all you have to do is just to pay attention to the number of species as well because they are very much important with respect to your exams so that's why i differentiated and i provided you complete information here if you found uh, any uh, mcqs related to the number of species so i have provided you the detailed information about the number of species that are different in different books of the same order or of the same organism like the lizards or the snakes and similar for all so in order sequimata it includes the lizards and snakes with 6 to 100 species of the lizards and 3500 species of the snakes so we will discuss about their difference in your next slides the rhynchocephalia include the tortoises there is only one species chelonia or testudines include the turtles tortoises with 340 species crocodilia includes the crocodiles and alligators with 25 species and just remember there are four living orders of the reptiles that is also very much important the extinct orders include the ornithischian saurischian pterosauria plesiosauria ichthyosauria and these are their examples and they all are extinct ornithischia example is stegosaurus saurischia include the tyrannosaurus pterosauria include the pterosaurs plesiosauria plesiosaurs ichthyosauria ichthyosaurs and their diagrams have also been shown in your uh, evolution topic that we have discussed earlier so all of the diagrams of these examples or these animals have been shown there so you can uh, have a look on the previous slides for their details so we are going to discuss about the complete details of the order so first one is the order testudines or chelonia that is the turtles and the tortoises they have 340 species the order testudines include the 340 species now uh, we are going to just uh, uh, separate the number of species in different books there are 225 species of turtles only turtles okay because turtle and tortoise are different so uh, if we're talking about the number of species of turtles there are 225 species of turtles mentioned in miller and harley fifth edition and 300 species in 10th edition means the 300 species of turtles in 10th edition of miller and harley and 225 species of turtles in fifth edition so if you find any uh, question related to this so with respect to your options uh, it would be easy for you to choose any of the option between these two they lack teeth but they have sharp beak used to grab and break means there are no teeth in the turtles but they have beak okay the bodies are encased within the shell and the shell is divided into two parts the first part is the external part that is located on the dorsal side of the body and that is carapace okay and on the ventral side uh, that is known as the plastron the vertebrae and the ribs are fused to carapace the upper portion the dorsal side carapace that is the site where the ribs and the vertebrae have been attached now there is an example of chelonia midas that is a green atlantic turtle which travels about 2000 kilometers to lay eggs from brazil 
to Essenian Island. They, these are the examples of the order Testudines, the Terrapin, the Turtle, and the Tortoise. Okay. Now, the second order is the Rhynchocephalia that includes only a single species, Tortoise, and its scientific name is the Sphenodon punctatus. The diagram has been shown to you. There is only one single species and that is found in the coasts of the New Zealand. That is also very much important point. This species is found in New Zealand. Okay. The presence of the third eye, the parietal eye, the, the tortoises have a third eye uh, the, that is known as the parietal eye that is located on the top of the head and this eye has lens and retina connected with brain as well. They form a group, Lepidosauria, with lizards and snakes that we already have discussed in your evolution. The rats were the major enemies of the tortoises in the New Zealand. Now, the third order is the order Crocodilia that includes the crocodiles, alligators, caimans, caviars, all of these have been shown here. So, there are total 25 species of the Crocodilia, uh, order Crocodilia and there are 21 species of crocodiles in both the 5th and the 10th edition of the Miller and Harley. So, it would be easy for you to choose any option uh, of uh, the 21 or 20, okay? Body, their body is literally compressed as you can see here uh, and remember one thing if we are just looking at the form and uh, for only the form of uh, the animal so all you have to do is just focus on the body shape and uh, as you can see here the body is literally compressed the tongue is not protrusible it's not going to move out the crocodiles are nocturnal they're going to feed at the night time only two species of alligators uh, are present, one in USA and the one in China. The gavials are the fish-eating crocodiles. They all are the carnivorous. They evolve in the back of the mouth, pre prevents water entry into air passage while engulfing in water, which means when they are going to engulf water, so there is a valve behind the mouth that will prevent the entry of that water into their uh, respiratory tract. They have complete ventricular septum as we studied in your general characteristics that the crocodilia is the only order that is uh, having the complete ventricular separation. Crocodiles resemble more with birds, okay, because we know they belong to the Arcosar lineage and uh, within, the, within that same lineage the birds evolved. The examples include the alligator, the crocodile and the caviar and you can see a clear cut difference in the especially if we are going to focus on their mouth. So you will see a clear cut difference in these three animals. So then we have the order Sequimeta that includes the snakes, lizards and worm lizards. Okay, They have two copulatory organs in the male. In male, two copulatory organs are present, and when we're going to discuss about their reproductive structure, I have uh, the structure of the lizard there to show you these two copulatory organs. The largest lizard belong to the monitor family, that is the Komodo dragon, and in Indonesia, it reaches up to three meters in length and hundred kg in weight. So only two species of the lizards are venomous: the Gila monster and the beaded lizard. Animals, skinks, chickos has ability to regenerate their tail to escape from the predators. It's so simple. If uh, you are looking at the wall lizard that is present in, that is a kind of domestic lizard that is present in the homes. Um, so uh, if you're going to hit that lizard, their tail is going to break from the caudal vertebrae and they have ability to regenerate this tail as well. Now, the order Sequimeta is divided into three suborders. The suborder Sauria, that includes all of the lizards. Okay. So, there are 3300 species of the lizards mentioned in Miller and Harley 5th edition, 4500 species in the 10th edition of Miller and Harley, and 4800 species in Hickman zoology. So, if you found any uh, question related to the number of species of lizards. So you can choose an option 
very easily if you have uh, uh, memorized this difference that is mentioned in different books. So most lizards have four legs and long tail, eardrums and movable eyelids. Their upper and lower jaws unite. These are oviparous. The examples include the chicos, wall lizard that has been shown to you. The second one, the iguanas, traco, chameleon, and olis. So we have chameleon here. And the venomous lizard, the gila monster. Okay. So you can see here, they have uh, four legs, long tail, okay, movable eyelids, and the upper and the lower jaw. You can see here in the chameleon uh, body structure or mouth structure, the upper and the lower jaw unite anteriorly. And they are all oviparous. They are going to lay eggs. The second suborder is serpentis that includes the snakes. There are about 2300 species of snakes in Miller and Harley, 5th edition. 2900 species in Miller and Harley, 10th edition. And from these 2900 or 2300 species, only 300 species are venomous. That is also a very much important point. Snakes are the limbless elongated reptiles that lack eardrum. You can see here there are no limbs in the snake. Okay, and they lack ear drums. They can't hear. They can only sense things. Eyes are covered by the transparent immovable eyelids. You can see here, eyes are covered by the transparent immovable eyelids. Most snakes are oviparous, but some give birth to the young ones. Then the suborder Amphisbeni include the worm lizards. That includes 135 species they have no legs okay their body is wedge shaped eyes are hidden beneath the skin as you can see here there are no eyes on the surface skin has ring like folds that are called annuli now we are moving towards the form and function so we will discuss about their uh, different body systems first one is the support and the movement so they have long skull with a plate of mon called the secondary palate. As you can see here, they have a, an elongated skull with a, with a plate of bone that is known as the secondary palate. And this secondary palate is separating the nasal cavity from the mouth cavity. The secondary palate separates the nasal passage from the mouth cavity. Reptiles have more cervical vertebrae than do amphibians. Uh, the cervical vertebrae. They have more cervical vertebrae than the amphibians, okay, that are present in the neck region. The ribs of the reptiles may be highly modified. The ribs of the reptiles are also uh, uh, causing in the body to be lengthened. Two or more sacral vertebrae attach the pelvic girdle to the vertebral column. As you can see here, there are the sacral vertebrae that are uh, going to get attached, this pelvic girdle, to the vertebrae. The sacrum or the sacral vertebrae are going to attach the pelvic girdle to the vertebrae. The reptiles have the long neck, okay, with the modified first two vertebrae. The first two vertebrae, cervical vertebrae named as atlas or the axis vertebrae. The caudal vertebrae that are the tail vertebrae of many lizards possess a vertical fracture plane. That is the kind of fracture plane from where this caudal vertebrae is going to break and the tails are going to be fall. Then we are going to discuss about the nutrition and the digestive system. So first we will have a look on the digestive parts that include the mouth and the tongue, salivary glands teeth, esophagus that is muscular and is involved in the movement of food towards the stomach. The next part is stomach and then the small intestine and the large intestine. As you can see here, the esophagus, the pharynx leading to the stomach and then these are the glands, the liver and the pancreas that are releasing their secretions. Then the duodenum that is the first part of the small intestine duodenum then jejunum and then ileum and then and the last uh, the large intestine is going to be started here the cecum colon and the rectum okay the feeding adaptations include they are mostly carnivorous reptiles are mostly carnivorous 
the the tongues of the turtles and the crocodiles are non protrusible they are not going to extend out uh, their tongues outside the body teeth of the archosaurs except the barbs these are of thicodont type dentition the, these are also very much important point archosaurs have thicodont type dentition except the barbs the crocodiles are the only non mammalian vertebrates that have the thicodont type dentition teeth are ectodont in amphibesni that is a suborder of sequimata and the pleurodont type dentition in most lizards the order sub or ya of the order as a sequimata vipers the family vipridae vipers belong to the family vipridae they possess the hollow fangs on the hinged maxillary bone at the anterior margin of the upper jaw as you can see here there is a hinged maxillary bone uh, on the uh, margin of the upper jaw and uh, the fangs these are the hollow fangs that are attached to this maxillary bone okay venom glands venom glands are actually the modified salivary glands as you can see here there is a connection of these fangs to the venom this one the green one these fangs have been connected to the venom duct and leading to the venom gland and these venom glands are actually the modifications of the uh, salivary glands that is also very much important point with respect to your past papers okay so the viper's venom is hemotoxin it means it's going to uh, it's going to uh, de destroy your blood cells and it's going to attack on your blood whereas the venom of the cobra is neurotoxin it's going to attack on your brain okay so next system is the circulatory system so first of all we'll have a look on the structure reptiles possess two atria as you can see in the diagram they have uh, two atria the left atrium and the right atrium okay the left and the right atrium ventricle of most reptiles is incompletely divided except crocodiles as we know that ventricle is incompletely separated okay there is no complete separation of ventricle but in crocodiles there is complete separation of ventricles except for the turtles the sinus venosus has become a patch of the cells that acts as a pace maker now the ventral aorta and the conus arteriosus uh, these are present actually the conus arteriosus in fish okay in amphibians but not in reptiles the conus arteriosus and ventral aorta they just have been divided into three major arteries the first one is the pulmonary that is single artery the pulmonary artery okay as you can see here in the diagram the this one is the pulmonary artery and the blood is leaving the heart from the ventral side this this pulmonary artery is leaving the heart from the ventral side and it's going to take blood away from the heart it's going to collect the blood from the heart and uh, uh, delivering this blood to the lungs then there are two systemic arteries okay these two systemic arteries one on the dorsal and other on the ventral side so the they are going to take blood to the lower and the upper body parts okay pulmonary is uh, delivering the blood to the lungs but the uh, systemic artery the left and the right systemic artery okay these are going to transfer the blood one to the upper portions of the body and one to the lower parts of the body so that is also very much important that ventral aorta and conus arteriosus divided into three major arteries and there is only one pulmonary and two systemic arteries now the blood flow blood flow in oxygen enters the ventricle now we'll just have a look on the blood flow uh, the blood that the blood uh, is showing with the blue arrows that is less, less ex oxygenated and showing with the yellow arrows is oxygenated blood so blood low in oxygen oxygen okay blood low in oxygen enters the ventricle from the right atrium as you can see here enters the ventricle from the right atrium the blood that is low in oxygen it's entering the ventri uh, ventricle from the right atrium and leaves the heart to the pulmonary artery it's going to leave the heart to the pulmonary artery as you can see in the diagram then blood high in oxygen enters the ventricle 
blood that is high in oxygen entered the ventricles uh, from the lungs via the pulmonary veins as you can see here that is entering in the ventricles uh, via the pulmonary veins from the lungs that is oxygenated and leaves the heart through the left and the right systemic arteries these are left and right systemic arteries and it's going to leave the oxygenated blood is going to leave the heart um, and uh, uh, this blood is going to be delivered to the upper and the lower parts of the body through the left and the right systemic arteries okay now the next system is the gas exchange system here so first of all we'll have a look on the structure the skin the pharynx and the cloaca these are the parts the cloaca and the skin the pharynx these are used for the respiration but the lungs are the main respiratory structures okay a larynx is also present uh, however the vocal cords are really absent but larynx is present here then the cartilage supports the trachea the trachea that is a respiratory tract it's been supported by the cartilage the cartilage cartilaginous rings actually the negative pressure mechanism is responsible for the lung ventilation now what is that kind of mechanism uh, there is a kind of the posterior movement of the ribs and the body will expand okay the body cavity is going to be expanded and when the body cavity is going to be expanded it means there is low pressure on the lungs you can also examine that or you can also apply this these conditions on your own body so you will see or you will observe that your uh, uh, cavity body cavity is going to be expand and the uh, blood the the pressure on the lungs is going to be decreased okay and uh, you are going to draw air into your lungs the second one is when the there is the elastic recoiling of the lungs means then you are going to forced out something your muscles are going to be contracted similar mechanism is with the reptiles okay the there is more pressure on the lungs and the air is going to be expelled out in turtles the inhalation and the exhalation is affected by the contraction and the exhalation of the muscles of the viscera that are the internal visceral organs now the next one is the excretion and the osmoregulation excretion uh, for the excretion they have the metanephric kidneys and they are two kidneys these kidneys have some functional units that are known as nephrons excretion of the uric acid they are going to excrete the uric acid okay and the the urinary bladder or the cloacal walls are going to reabsorb the water and the uric acid can be stored in a paste like form the uric acid is actually a semi solid excretory product so uh, after all the digestion when the digestive products are going to be reached out in the into the cloaca okay so the cloacal walls as well as the urinary bladder walls are going to absorb the necessary nutrients specifically the water so cloaca and the bladder walls are going to absorb the water and then the excretory product or excretory waste is going to be excreted out in semi solid form that is uric acid so utilization of the uric acid as an excretory product also made possible the development of the embryo in the terrestrial environment because the non toxic uric acid can be concentrated in the egg membranes that is also very much important point osmoregulatory adaptations include the internal respiratory surfaces okay uh, such as for the panting their dry skin okay the osmoregulatory adaptations are for uh, conserving the water and the salts in the body to maintain the balance of uh, salts and water in your body or in the reptile's body so that is internal respiratory surfaces the dry skin the nocturnal habitats the burrowing activities the storage of the water in the lymphatic spaces the the reptiles have ability to store water in, in lymphatic spaces under the skin these spaces are present just under the skin or in the urinary bladder okay and salt glands below the eyes they have salt glands to below the eyes to get rid of the excess salts okay now the next system is the nervous and the sensory 
functions so the nervous system include the brain okay the cerebral hemisphere the cerebral hemisphere or the cerebrum that is the enlarged part the optic lobes as you can see here the cerebellum okay that is somewhat smaller than cerebrum these are all the parts of the nervous system now the sensory functions they have well developed color vision reptiles have well developed color vision and uh, what uh, what kind of uh, eye structure and eye adaptations they have they have the upper and the lower eyelids okay and a nictitating membrane is present in these organisms as well as the blood sinus is going to protect and cleans the surface of the eye you can see here that is a nictitating membrane as well as blood supply through the blood sinus is going to clean and protect the surface of eye some reptiles possess a median eye that is known as the parietal eye as you can see here in the diagram that is the parietal eye uh, it uh, develops from the outgrowth of the roof of the forebrain okay from the roof of the forebrain there is an outgrowth that is known as the parietal eye or median eye the ears of the snakes are going to detect the substrate vibration substrate bond vibrations that is also very much important point now the jacobson's organ uh the these are the blind end pouches opening in the mouth cavity you can see here these are the blind end pouches opening in the mouth cavity okay and what is their function uh, they are going to detect the chemicals for uh, the olfaction or for the smell and these are present in snakes okay now on the pit organs the pit organs are actually heat sensitive they are going to detect the heat changes and these are present on each side of the face between the eye and the nostril okay between the eye and the nostril this one is the eye and this one is the nostril region so between these there is a pit organ that is uh, uh, going to sense the heat changes okay and that is present in the pit vipers that are snakes as well as in the rattle snakes now the reproduction and the development okay so the reproductive structure we're going to uh, discuss about the gonads these are the reproductive structures that lie in the abdominal cavity of the um, different members or species of the reptiles okay in males a pair of the ducts delivers the sperms to cloaca as you can see here the vast difference is going to delivers the sperms to the cloaca to the cloacal region that is that is the cloacal aperture okay so sperms are going to be transported through vas deferens to the cloacal region now after copulation uh, the sperms may be stored in a seminal receptacle in the female reproductive tract that is a part of the female reproductive tract the seminal receptacle okay so it's uh, going to store the male sperms All male reptiles except the tortoises possess an intermittent organ for introducing the sperms into the female reproductive tract okay so except the tortoises as you can see here the intermittent organ is actually the penis or the hemipenis so these are required for delivering or introducing sperms into the female reproductive tract during copulation lizards and snakes possess the paired hemipenis at the base of the tail as you can see here the diagram is of the lizards so the male lizard not in the female the male lizards have a pair of the hemipenis at the base of the tail okay so it's uh, uh, has been shown to you it's clear for you so there is internal fertilization means after mating the sperms are going to be transferred to the female reproductive tract and the fertilization is going to occur in the upper region of the oviduct that is the female reproductive system the ovary the oviduct okay with different parts and uh, you can see here it's leading to the cloaca and the upper region of the oviduct is the region where the sperms are going to fertilize the eggs the glandular regions of the oviduct are going to secrete the albumin and the egg shell parthenogenesis has been described in six families of the lizards and one species of snakes means only one member is going to reproduce there is no need of the male members in that case and this phenomenon is known as parthenogenesis okay uh is a kind of uh, uh non development of uh, the egg without any fertilization to the next offspring so 
uh, the six families of lizards and one species of snake is having such kind of behavior now uh, we have done with the form and function and we are going to move towards the important mcqs that i have quoted for you in these slides remember these are very much important for your upcoming exams so the first one is how many living orders of the class reptilian are found today so there are four orders that are living today and we know there are different orders that have been extinct number 2 in addition to the birds this order contains the species from the archosaurian lineage except uh, in addition to birds archosaurian lineage include the birds as well as the crocodiles okay number 3 out of about 2900 species of the snakes how many are poisonous and we know that there are 300 that are poisonous the functional kidney of the adult reptiles we know that is metanephric okay number 5 living archosaurs include the uh, both a and c the archosaur lineage includes the crocodiles as well as the mammals okay now number 6 the number of species of the turtles is approximately 300 okay number 7 the order crocodilia has 21 species number 8 the dorsal portion of the shell of the turtle is carapace number 9 what is the name of the specialized sensory organ found in the snakes and that is the copsons organ for smell number 10 which of the following is not correct and absids uh, have um, an absids in examples include the turtles Diapsids include the sauro pterygians and ichthyosaurs. Amphibians include legless lizards. Crocodiles, the three chambered heart. Wrong. The crocodiles have four chambered heart. The ventricle is completely separated. So that is the correct option. Number eleven. A skull having no temporal opening behind the orbits is uh, characterized by the an absid. Number twelve. The order Rhynchocephalia includes a single species that is Phenodon. Number thirteen classification of reptiles is based on the temporal fenestry that is an opening behind the eye orbit. Number fourteen poison glands of the snake are modified salivary glands. Number fifteen the number of cervical vertebrae in the reptiles are seven. Number sixteen which of the following is adapted for arboreal life? So these are chameleons. They are going to live on the trees. They are going to jump on the trees. Number seventeen the members of the suborder Amphisbeni, commonly known as the worm lizards. Okay. Number eighteen which part of the amniotes egg is responsible for storing waste? And that is allantois. We have studied about that. Number nineteen, the substance which covers the bones of the reptiles is keratin. Okay. Number twenty, the number of systemic arteries in the reptiles. We know that there are two systemic arteries in the reptiles. Now, the most important thing, and that I have quoted some uh, past paper questions for you here, and uh, these are from the PPSC Zoology. and these are different different of different years from 2001 to 2022 these are all the uh, uh, questions related to the reptiles that uh, uh, just came in your different uh, ppsc zoology exams uh, from 2001 to 2022 so the first one is the uric acid is the chief nitrogenous waste of reptiles and the birds okay in your previous uh, video we studied about the birds and we know that the birds are also going to secrete the uric acid so reptiles and birds both secrete the uric acid and that question came in your ppsc zoology exam 2015 okay that number 2 is reptilian kidney is metanephric type kidney and it came in your ppsc zoology exam 2017 Number three is venom gland in snakes is the modified form of salivary glands. It came in two thousand six seventeen PPSC zoology. Number four is an amniotic egg is present in sea turtles. Okay, and uh, frog, fish, cockroach they don't have the amniotic eggs. So sea turtle or simple turtle they have the amniotic eggs. It uh, came in your PPSC zoology twenty twenty paper. Number five, which of the following is first evolved in reptiles, and these are ribs. Okay, so it came in uh, PPSC exam twenty twenty two. 
Number six, the reptiles are oviparous. They're going to lay eggs. Okay, so this came in your PPS zoology paper 22, 2002. Number seven, the scales in the reptiles originate from ectoderm or epidermis. Both of these options are correct. Ectoderm or epidermis. So it came two times in a PPS zoology paper 2003 and PPS zoology paper 2006. Number eight, among the following, which snake is non-poisonous and that is python. Uh, this question came in your PPS zoology paper 2004. Number nine, Python kills its prey by constriction. It came in 2006. Number 10, in turtles, the dorsal plate is known as carapace. It came in 2007 paper. Number 11, the inner membrane of the two fetal membranes in reptiles, birds and mammals is called amnion. Amnion is the innermost membrane, remember. Okay. It came in 2009. So, we have done with your uh, today's topic inshallah will come up with your next video uh, up till then allah hafiz